Well, welcome along, guys. I am out for my daily exercise <laughs> on the H2. I mean, it is exercise riding this bike. It's holding on. That wears you out enough. But it's the day that the restrictions have relaxed slightly in the UK. So we're now there's no limit set on how far you can go on exercise. And, you know, there's a slight reduction. People like MCN and other biking magazines and organizations have said it's now safe to ride so this is the first time i've ridden in about eight months and uh i thought let's bring the h2 out so last time i went out on the 690 i was going on about all the plans i had the bikes i was going to be riding and then covid hit it hit a little bit when I went out, but I was still saying, you know, how serious is it, bloody blah, blah blah. Well, since then, it's hit the fan. So this really is just an excuse for me to get back into riding again, to get a feel for riding bikes again. I've never had such a long period of not riding. I think it's been about eight weeks in the UK that, you know, it's been essential travel only only allowed to work if you're a key worker you know you shouldn't be riding for pleasure at all if you're riding to work absolutely fine if it's your only form of transport absolutely fine but that's been about eight weeks about eight weeks we've been like that now this wednesday today we had the uh, sort of the uh, green light the amber light if you like that we could go out and start riding again you know you could go out it was no limit set oh right, i love Jesus, it is a 40 down here, and this is the other problem. This is why I'm being exceptionally careful today because there's idiots about who have just not been out for ages for a couple of months and they just they're just doing things like they're just overtaking some old deer in a Honda just <laughs> in a Civic just overtook me on the H2, you know. And that's what I mean, people. The, the driving standards are bad enough anyway let alone when people haven't been out for two months. So uh, I'm going to be extremely careful today. Do not be expecting to see wheelies and this bike bouncing off the red line, because that is just not going to happen. This is just a gentle poodle around just to enjoy motorcycling once more. So how's everyone been keeping? How have you been affected by the COVID thing? I mean, of course, I've been doing the garage videos. I've been working on the Hyper. My day job has me working from home anyway. So I'm used to spending my time at home, but I've really, really missed not being able to ride. That's been the biggest challenge of this. That's what's changed the most for me. Just not being able to get on the bike and go out and just clear your head. You know, this to me is my escape. I'm sure you guys are exactly the same. Biking to me is sort of escapism. It's my downtime from work. You know, it's, it's where I go when I'm feeling a bit low and, you know, to have that taken away, it's been really hard. So hopefully now we can uh, resume riding carefully. Obviously you can't meet people. You can't meet any sort of groups. You can meet one person. 50 limit and she's still hammering the old jazz along. Is it a jazz? Or is it a Civic? It's an old codger in a Honda. That's all you got to worry about. We'll let, we'll let her go, we'll let her go. We're not about going quick. We are about just enjoying motorcycling again. This bike feels super weird to be riding it again. I did get one ride on it when I went up to meet Simon with the Daytona, the 765 Daytona I rode. I put a little link ease. That was the last time I rode a motorcycle. That was the last time I've ridden and uh, it feels weird. The tires, the tires feel like they're a bit flat and a bit squishy but I've pumped them up, I've, I've measured them before I came out, so I know they're not. But I sometimes do find that on this bike, because it's quite big and heavy. The tyres, they, they don't feel, it feels like they've underinflated a little bit. It's probably because they're the, uh, the Bridgestone BEO, whatever they are, the track tyres, really. And they've got to get some heat in them. But not today, because we're not going fast, Jobs. That's loud. Also got to be careful, of course, because I don't know how much traffic's been on the road, so there could still be. Last time I went out, there was a lot of grit, a lot of gravel on the road. So hopefully 
that is cleared but you've got to be a little bit careful there's nobody at Lumi's which is good to see people aren't gathering in groups that's another thing which has been so hard during this lockdown is the weather has been absolutely beautiful for a good month six weeks as soon as the lockdown was announced the weather just turned to summer <laughs> and we couldn't go out so this is the first time I've actually really ridden in summer-like conditions. It's only about 14, 15 degrees today. It is a bit colder, but it's warmer than I've ridden before. Let's try and get a bit of a, a bit of heaty poos in those tyres. But there's no need to get heat in the tyres, Chops, because you're not going quickly. Just remember that. So a little update on the H2 while we're out on it. I've got, now got the full wings on it, so I've no longer got any mirrors. I said I wasn't going to do that. I said I wasn't going to take the mirrors off and put these on, but it just looks so goddamn cool with them on. <laughs> it just looks insane. It just looks mental. So I thought I'm going to have to do the upper wings. Since I've done the lower ones, I'm going to have to do the upper ones. These are from the, the H2R, of course. These aren't aftermarket. These are... Well, they are aftermarket, they're motor composites, but they're exact copies of the H2R, H2R versions. Um, so the mirrors are gone, so I've got no mirrors, but I am used to riding without any mirrors. It just means you have to do a lot of rear observations and make sure you always do, you know, your over-the-shoulder checks before you change lanes and stuff. And having no mirrors is legal in the UK. I'll just point that out, you're allowed to have no mirrors, that's not, it's not illegal. Also I've got no indicators, <laughs> well that could be illegal. I've got rear indicators, but because the indicators are in the mirrors, I've got to find a solution. I was going to get all this sorted, this is all going to be done, but then I started working on the Hyper and this sort of took a back seat really. So I was going to get some bar end mounted indicators and perhaps a little bar end mirror as well. So. That's my plan, but I just haven't got round to it. All of my spare cash has been going on the hyper. Check behind me, no coppers. No, can't do that, Chops. We're keeping it sensible here. There's actually not that many people out. I thought it'd be busier than this. I thought it would be a bit busier. It's actually not too bad at all. The temptation is there to, uh, to open her up. A little tickle wouldn't hurt. Oh yeah. Let's get past this guy. Ah, he's turning off. If he's turning off, are you allowed to overtake? I think he's not turning off, he's just saying overtake, but I'm not overtaking on double whites, mate. Trying to get me nicked? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful to be out. Oh, I love it. God, I'd miss this. I would have come out on the 690, but it's um, it's due its first service, and KTM are still not open yet. KTM UK are closed, so I don't want to go over the 600 miles. So I'm uh, sort of just waiting, really waiting for them to open so I can take it down and get the first service done. I mean, that's, I've had that bike since February, not even had the first service done. It was all set up to happen and then Covid hit. So I'm itching to get that bike fully serviced and have some proper fun on it. But that's not going to happen just yet until they open. Evening, afternoon even. What's this say here? Stay alert. Control the virus, save lives. Stay alert, control the virus, save lives. Absolutely. Ooh. Oh, this bike is a is an absolute beast. I do. I still do want to get this mapped 
Now that was, would have been done by now if it wasn't for this COVID thing. I don't want more power because it is, you know, this, it will be crazy, I fully unlocked. And it'll be 250 at the back wheel. But I don't, I'm not doing it, it's fast enough. I'm doing it to improve the throttle response because it's a little bit snatchy on these. Bottom end is all right, but when you get mid, it's, it's, when you're on going around the corner, it just picks up too quick and it's a bit snappy. So I just want to get that sorted out as much as anything. But if you're having it mapped, well, <laughs> you may as well unlock the full potential, haven't you? But I cannot imagine how fast it's going to be with 250 at the back wheel. It's going to be insane. The thing I love about the H2 is the torque. And I've gone on about this for ages. Road bikes must have torque. And because of that supercharger, that's what this has got. It's got that torque. Which is, you know, it's exact. There's no point just having everything at the top end. You need that mid range. <laughs> Love it. Slow down, Chopsy. Come on now. Keep it calm. Don't go mental save lives your own one but it's that it's that it's that mid-range what makes a road bike absolutely makes a road bike i've actually sold the gsxr now so massive thanks to wheels for advertising that and i've actually sold it a guy in uh, crete has bought it i think so if you're watching thanks so much buddy you're gonna love that bike i was a bit sorry when they said it was sold because it's incredible, it's a lovely, lovely bike and I'm going to be short on a track bike now. So the plan was to use the Hyper for sort of track days and do little tight tracks, you know, use the SNCR as well. But I'm missing a proper track, oh the fuel lights up. I'm missing a proper track bike, so it's the space, well and money is always a problem obviously, but at the end of last year I was really getting into the track days so I really wouldn't mind a track bike now so perhaps the next build series will be a track bike so that, that, that could be something to think about because I can't take this on track it will never get through the noise testing I don't, it's too expensive I do not want to put this down into the kitty litter on track no way, no way and you know it's not a track bike it's, it's a bit big, it's a bit heavy it's, it's, you know, it's going to be a target for everyone if you went on a track day for this so I, I'm, I'm not interested in taking this on track. The Hyper Motor, that would have been all right, but it's going to be a bit blingy itself now. I think I still will take it on track. And of course the SMCR for things like Brands Hatch, tracks like that would be good. But I'm missing that sports bike for the track. So it uh, could be a new little build series out a bit later on. Probably not this year, perhaps next year. But I'm really, because the GSXR is sold and I've paid off the loans I had to buy that bike and also the loan I had to buy the Super Duke my first Gen 1 Super Duke I've sold that off so I've actually paid off two loans so this bike is now 100% mine no loans on this bike no HP, no PCP this is all 100% mine this bike which is a lovely, lovely feeling but that does mean I've got a bit of spare cash <laughs> so uh, I'm not really planning on buying anything when I borrow the new Super Duke, I think if it's going to be a new bike, it would probably be the Super Duke 3. Because that just looks like the perfect bike to me because it's got all that torque. I think I saw a dyno comparison between the new Super Duke and the, uh, the V4, you know, the Ducati Street Fighter V4. And the Duke is like 20 newton metres of torque or brake foot pounds of torque up on the V4. The V4's got only got another 10 brake at the top and it's 20 horses down on torque. 20 uh, foot-pounds of torque down on torque. <laughs> Does that make sense? So I really do think the Super Duke will be a better road bike. I'm gonna test ride both, you know, and review both when things all start up again, but on the paper, I think the Super Duke could be the better road bike out of the two. Let's see. Oh, I do love that pop. Oh. 
The thing is a beast! Oh! Oh! Calm it down. Calm it down, Chopsy. Would you believe I've almost had this bike a year now? I, I, I got some insurance quotes coming through by post to say my insurance is running out and I need to renew and all that. And uh, I've had it a year nearly. I got it at the beginning of June. How many miles has it got? I don't, it's not got many. Oh, 18, almost 1,800 miles is all. That means it's going to be due its annual service soon as well. So that's quite annoying. It's obviously based on mileage is 12,000 mile service intervals or yearly so you know the bike is out of warranty you only get a two-year warranty with Kawasaki's and this is out of warranty it's a 2017 bike you know it's sat around in the showroom for a year as like a bike on display not for sale so it's got incredibly low mileage but it's not in warranty but I want to obviously look at this guy come on I want to get it serviced because, you know, it's the sort of bike where you come to sell it, people are going to want to see a full Kawasaki service history stamped up on it. So I think that's probably going to be July, I think, when the 12 months. So hopefully the bloody dealers will all be open and I can actually get it serviced without it being a bloody performance. But so, uh, yeah, I've nearly had it a year. How can I have had this bike? A year almost. It must be time to sell it. I think this bike is a keeper. I think it's so special. It's, you know, you don't see many of them. It's, it's, it's a potential future classic. It really is. And it just looks so mad. When you see it in the flesh, it, it, pictures just don't do it justice. You have to see it <laughs> to believe it. Oh, that sounds very corny, but it just looks so... With all the carbon bits, the wings, it just looks mental. And uh, I do absolutely love it. I think once it's mapped and it's uh, a bit smoother to ride, and it is a little bit, you know, you've got a little bit of weight on your wrists, I'm not going to lie, you know, it's, it's not an overly comfortable bike. It's quite an uncomfortable sports bike, you know, it's more uncomfortable than like the S1000s and those sort of road, even the RSV4 I'd say is probably, it's a, it's a bit more spacious than that, but the weight on your wrists and stuff, I'd say it, it was a little bit more uncomfortable. You can get some slight risers. I've mentioned this all this before, but I could still get the slight risers just to bring the front up a little bit, give you a bit more comfort. But I think it's a keeper just because it's such a special thing. I think the H2 is a keeper for now. Right, let's get some juice and I think we'll call it a close. I'll get a bit of petrol. And I'll speak to you guys later. I'll probably be back in the garage on the Ducati next time. I'm sort of awaiting parts and stuff really. Uh, there's now on that one, that's Andy. All fueled up, we're gonna do another circuit round, but uh, take care guys. Thanks for watching. If you do go and out riding, just be a bit careful. Be a bit more careful than me. <laughs> I know it's so tempting. It's been so long since we've ridden. The roads are still pretty empty. It is quite tempting to give it some right wrist. I mean, it is a lot of willpower to hold back because just let, it's like starting in the start of the season. It always takes a little while to build your skill level back up again, get used to the bike again. So just take care and ride safe and I'll speak to you soon, guys. See you later. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. Whoa! I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Listen to this.